What an end to the test match. I still don't know how to react. India versus Australia. You can always expect a fantastic thriller. I have with me Deep Das Gupta, the former Indian wicketkeeper, Jason Desi, the ESPN India sports anchor, and Abhishek Mukherjee, the cricket historian and statistician. And together, we'll take you through the cricket soccer analysis of the India versus Australia classic thriller at Adelaide. Now, Deep, the first question to you, fantastic end, chilling climax, and for some moments, the heart was really in the mouth, wasn't it? I won't go to that extent of Ravi Shastri, but the heart was really in the mouth. Well, I believe that's the better phrase to use. Uh, and that's exactly how it was, to be honest. I mean, uh, you know, the last four wicket partnership was worth around good 100, 120 odd runs. Uh, starting from Tim Payne to Cummins to Nathan Lyon. I think uh, I going forward, I think the last four wickets, Australian wickets, kind of showed the way forward to the top order batsman as well. You know, if you're ready to slog it out and 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 really sweat it out, uh, there is there is uh, runs to be uh, to be had, and that's been the case throughout. Uh, the Australian batsmen, yes, you had batsmen like Hayden and all, which who are free free flowing, Dave, uh, David Warner and all, but you also had the other side uh, of the story, which is someone like Justin Langer, who's currently the coach of Australia. You know, so you know Australians uh, that that I've seen and known of. Uh, are are really tough and these conditions are tough for Australian cricket. Absolutely. As I told you, I still don't know how to react. Uh, Jason, it was so near yet so far for Australia and Nathan Lyon actually breaking down after that fantastic effort to win the test match for the Forest side. It was a real touching moment, wasn't it? Yes, indeed. So close and yet so far. I mean, for Australia to get 291 in the fourth innings of a test match at the Adelaide Oval was a decent effort. I didn't think they'd pass 200 in the fourth innings. So they battled hard. I mean, Nathan Lyon, as you pointed out, did almost everything he could with both the bat and the ball to win the match for the Aussies. And who could blame him for being so upset at the end? But uh, I really think that uh, this was a classic test match we're going to remember. And it set everything up so beautifully for the rest of the series. I can't wait for the second test to start. But uh, a deserved victory for India because they played more consistent cricket over the course of this test match. Absolutely. Now, Jason, uh, sticking to the same theme, uh, Australia, they are definitely a depleted side with the absence of... Uh, Stephen Smith and David Warner, no question about it. Their presence would have made a whole lot of difference. But given that, what do you think of the team's performance, especially the batting performance in the second innings and the rally by the tail? I think overall the Australian batting performance was disappointing despite the rearguard action that they showed in both the first and second innings. I mean, the top order, the likes of Finch, uh, Kawaja, Harris, uh, Hanscom, just didn't get enough runs. I mean, they made starts... But they didn't go on with the job. They didn't get the uh, big scores that their team desperately needed. So uh, for me, that was very disappointing. I was also disappointed that Australia didn't uh, get India out for a lower total than they did in that first innings. Remember, they had India on the ropes, uh, less than 105 batsmen out. And they just couldn't dismiss them. India moving on to 250, which was a decent score. And in retrospect, Australia really was too short in that uh, first innings. And that was where India always had the upper hand because Australia didn't have the first innings lead that they should have had after bowling so well on that opening morning. Right. Now, Deep, uh, about Cheteshwar Pujara, 194 runs in this crucial test. And the track and the circumstances, it did suit his batting perfectly. Is this the best that you have seen him bat? Is this the best that I'm, I've seen him bat up? Well, right up there, this is what I'd say. I don't know whether it's the best or not, but yeah, in, in the top maybe three or five innings that I've seen of uh, Chiteshwar, you know, recently uh, in Nottingham, he got 100. I think uh, that was very, very good as well. But 
you know, yes, I mean, as you mentioned, the surface also kind of uh, helped him and helped his style of batting, not just him. Uh, but overall, I think, you know, this is this is just great for Test cricket. What I really liked about Pujara's approach was uh, the way he played uh, Nathan Lyon. You know, stepping out using his pad in this age of DRS, uh, where you know the whole uh, old school idea of padding a spinner is completely gone and out of fashion, uh, he's just brought it back. Um, you know, I mean, padding is back in a big time, and that's what Pujara has shown. Uh, and he could do it because he was very smart and he realized the fact that you know, if he's going to start stepping out and using his pads, the kind of bounce that Australian pitches have and the turn that particularly this pitch had, um, you know, chances are the ball's going to miss the stumps more often than not. So he took his chances. I think it was very, very clever of him to come up with that strategy because Nathan Lyon uh, looked really, really good. I mean, you know, if you don't have... uh, uh, that confidence or whatever. I mean, this is a very, very good way to kind of handle someone like Nathan Lyon, especially from the rough. Right. Now, Abhishek, uh, continuing on the Pujara theme, what do you think about this strike rate issue? There has been a lot of debate about Cheteshwar Pujara's strike rate, whether it is important in Test cricket, whether it is not. And fans, you know, will tend to take the perspective that uh, you see India won this test and that proves that strike rate is not very important because Pujara scored quite slowly. But if you ask me, it was the circumstances. Uh, circumstances uh, governed this uh, test match and uh, it was quite appropriate to score slowly. And secondly, Pujara never looked really bogged down. It was not that he was scoring slowly because he couldn't manage to force the pace. It was a cautious approach which was dictated by the condition of the game and also he was in full control. So if you ask me, this sort of test match, it uh, really makes sense to score slowly, to have a cautious approach. In other test matches, when the uh, conditions are more conducive to batting, one needs to score quicker uh, to allow the bowlers full time to take the wickets and force a result. So what's your take on this strike rate issue? See, I have always believed in quick scoring. As a team, you need to get your runs quickly to put pressure on the opposition. That way your bowlers get enough time to bowl out the opposition twice quickly. Uh, As for strike rate, it's the best possible measure, but it's not a global parameter. In this test, for example, Pujara batted brilliantly. His strike rate of 43 would have been, uh, say, pedestrian in most tests. But here here it was decent. I'll tell you why. The overall strike rate in this test has been 44. Pujara scored at 43. India got their runs at 48, Australia at 40. And both sides, um, mind you, are known to score their runs quickly. They both they are both aggressive batting sides. So, Pujara did pretty well in um, given the context of the match, given the rate at, at which others score. Having said that, this was not a pitch where runs came quickly. There will be flatter tracks in future where he has to score faster because... On flat tracks, the Indian bowlers will also need more time to bowl out the opposition twice. But if he adapts and scores at 50 to 55 on relatively flat pitches, he will become that number three everyone fears. That that number three, the number three um, position, I believe, is the 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 batsman who can exert most pressure on the opposition should be, the should bat at number three or four. That has always been the case. India have a Very aggressive, very dominant number four. There's no reason why Pujara, if he bats the way he did here, his his aggressive footwork against Lyon, the way he batted here, if he carries on doing that, there's no reason he can't become that number three. Absolutely, I agree a lot to that. Now, uh, Deep, my next question... Uh, 19 for 3 and then 80 odd for 5 on the first morning and from there India go on to win this test. Remarkable comeback, wasn't it? How do you rate this performance? Yeah, and and like I said, Pujara, I think uh, Pujara was absolutely brilliant uh, throughout this test match with the bat. And also the fact that, you know, uh, when you look at that first innings and, and in my show, uh, Ravi came over and even uh, and, and he said the, the same thing that uh, the top order batsmen or uh, tactically they were a, a little off because, you know, when you this was not a very 
uh, Adelaide like kind of a pitch or Australia like kind of a pitch because it was a little on the slower side a little on the slower side and and maybe the, the Indian batters were expecting a better batting track uh, and uh, an easier batting track so you could see that initially in, in, in the top order batsmen they just wanted to go out there and play their strokes which obviously I mean Pujara's innings kind of uh, a kind of show the way for everyone. If you look at uh, the innings that Travis had played, it was very similar to what Pujara had done in the first innings. Uh, even uh, Virat Kohli, who's such a free-flying batsman, but his second innings, 34, was was very uh, Pujara-esque. Uh, so I think, uh, yes, resilience, yes, and also I think course correction. That was uh, the case uh, after the first session, I believe. Absolutely. Now, Jason, the next question to you, and we'll stay on the Nathan Lyon subject. Um, he made the ball talk. We are ignoring his batting for now. That was a bonus. With the ball, he really impressed and uh, as he has been doing all these years. And he made it uh, turn, bounce. He used the footmarks of Mitchell Stark to perfection. And Ashwin, I mean, even though he is perhaps uh, one of the best spinners of the world, he could not get that amount of turn and bounce. Uh, he was impressive, no doubt, but he could not get that amount of turn and bounce. So, um, do you think the difference is because uh, Leon has been born and brought up in on these tracks and he knows exactly the way to exploit them? Nathan Lyon was absolutely superb. There's no doubt that he'll be remembered as one of the greatest Australian bowlers of all time with more than 300 test wickets. I mean, he only made his debut back in 2011. He was a groundsman at the Adelaide Oval. He actually was born in New South Wales and uh, lived in Canberra for a long time before moving to South Australia to launch his uh, career in Adelaide. But I mean, the guy is just a fantastic bowler. And, you know, he even outperformed uh, Ashwin when it comes uh, to the number of wickets that he got in this test match and the way that he performed with the bat as well. Got so much respect for Nathan Lyon. Australia will need him to continue performing to this level if they've got any chance of uh, overturning the deficit in this uh, test series against India. Right. Now, Abhishek uh, will stay with the spin and we'll discuss Ashwin. He pulled a math and spell out here and he played a crucial role in India's victory, we have to say, with three wickets in each innings. But at the same time, uh, he could not quite manage that turn bounce as Leon did. Uh, and we talked to Jason about it uh, just now. But uh, to me, it seems that he played the role of uh, plugging one end up with his incisive spin to perfection, if I may say it. What do you think about that? Uh, has he redeemed himself uh, for all the criticism he has got over all these years of not performing in non-helpful conditions? Or is there still something that he needs to do? See, we often talk about sheet anchors. I mean, a batsman who holds one end up as the other score at the other end. I think Ashwin demonstrated here how one can be a sheet anchor with a ball as well. Mind you, picking him ahead of Kuldeep and even Jadeja was not a was a difficult choice. But India, I am sure, are happy at this point that they opted for him. Uh, Ashwin took six wickets in the test. Lyon took eight. But Ashwin, I believe, was at least as good as Lyon. He could not run through the op opposition. But finger spinners have rarely done well in Australia. Mind you, five of his six wickets were of top order batsmen. Batsmen in the top five. Only the final wicket was of a number eleven. But I think Ashwin played a, role, a greater role than that, greater role than play, picking up wickets. He went for 1.71 and over. That's amazing. And he did that for about over 85 overs in the test. This allowed the Indian fast bowlers to go flat out. He bowled marathon spells and never gave, gave anything away. On the fifth day, he bowled unchanged for over two sessions, for almost two sessions, but the second session was extended. Uh, Vijay, I think, bowled two overs in between. But other than that, he bowled unchanged. He conceded only 1-4 in these two sessions. He did not get quick wickets, but he gave nothing away. He made sure Australia had to get those runs. Even if they did get the runs, even if Australia did get the runs, they wouldn't get them from his end. And he did that for four sessions after doing the exact same thing in the first innings. I think this was defensive spin bowling at its best. Uh, Ashwin has redeemed himself after his two ordinary tours here. I believe he'll get only better. He's already a champion. He is 
an all time great of this uh, all time great of indian cricket <coughs> i believe he'll get only better from here yeah i do agree ashwin is definitely an asset um deep the indian bowlers again this is perhaps the best bowling unit india has ever got and everybody chipped in it was a team effort and this victory is remarkable in that there was no indian bowler in either innings taking more than 3 wickets no one got 4 wickets but everybody chipped in everybody contributed and the victory was achieved what do you think of this performance especially jasprit bumrah and mohammad shami in the second innings yeah absolutely uh, i mean from a bowling perspective listen australia is always going to be challenging for the indian bowlers uh, because uh, if you if you look at this year or the, before this series it was england and then before that was south africa the conditions were heavily loaded towards the bowlers uh, so it it was you know kind of easier for the bowlers if i may say so uh, but australia was always going to be challenging and this surface particularly wasn't you know it 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 was a, it was a sluggish kind of a surface something that uh, does not really help the batsmen that much neither the bowlers but i think they were extremely disciplined uh, and and the fact that uh, also virat the way he's rotated his bowlers uh, not giving you know massive uh, uh, as in big spells to uh, any of the fast bowlers because mind you there were only three uh, fast bowlers uh, that was picked on either side uh but yes the spinners had to bowl a lot again nathan lyon and ashwin uh so having said that i think uh, you know the bowlers were absolutely brilliant uh, what i really like was discipline if i go back to 2015 and i and i look at the indian bowlers and their performance uh you know there was a lack of discipline there they would bowl three four good balls and two boundary balls uh so they allowed the batsmen obviously the quality of the batsmen in that team was a little better than this one i would say uh but uh, uh, but you know they they would give uh, two boundary balls every over uh, but looking at this performance i think the discipline was uh, the, the discipline part was so so heartening now jason turning to australian bowling mitchell stark was not that impressive uh, out here and turning to the batting obviously there are big holes to plug uh i'm not suggesting that mitchell stark be left out of the side obviously that is out of question but uh, what do you think should be the changes in the entire unit uh, going into the second test in perth i think you're being a bit harsh on mitchell stark i agree he wasn't at his best in this test match but he still picked up five wickets he was pretty economical and the uh, five wickets came at a pretty good average as well plus he scored runs with the bat vital runs down the order as for changes uh, for the second test i'm not expecting to see anything major uh i think the players are there to perform but the batsmen at the top of the order especially aaron finch who uh, could have been out for a pair easily in this test match and kawaja experienced uh, kawaja needs to really produce the goods in the second test uh, i know he had an injury coming in so we're looking to the more established members to pick up the slack in the absence uh, of Warner and Steve Smith in the second test for Australia to level the series against India. Right. Now Deep, uh, let's turn to the Indian side and in spite of this fascinating win, let me touch upon a slightly discordant note. Uh there are some problems with the lineup. Firstly, the opening, it's a problem. Uh Morley Bijay is completely out of form and uh, KL Rahul uh he has been inconsistent by the minute i mean some strokes uh make it look like he is one of the best in the world and the very next stroke can be a very very careless dismissal and at the same time down at the other end the tail the last three wickets in the second innings contributed zero with the bat there was one run added and that was an extra uh it is one of the most unproductive tails that india has produced in recent times and uh, in a long time for the matter and i know that they are not picked for their batting but if you look at england uh the english series uh england won 4-1 and the major difference was the runs scored by the tail so in this context what do you think should be the approach as india going to the next test uh, do you think changes are forthcoming or do you think they should stick to the winning combination what is your take 
Yeah, I mean, there were. I, I, I thought there were more positives. Obviously, you all will agree with that, uh, especially Pujara and Ajinkya Rahane uh, scoring runs in the very first Test match. So the monkeys off their back, so to say. Uh, uh, obviously, the bowlers as well. But having said that, yes, uh, uh, you would have expected the lower uh, lower order and the lower middle order as well to score more runs in the second innings. But I would not hold it against them. Someone like Rohit Sharma, who hasn't played a lot of uh, even first class cricket in the last six eight months. Uh, coming and handling Nathan Lyon on a surface like that was always going to be difficult. Uh, even though the first uh, first inning dismissal was was a terrible, terrible shot to uh, to have played by Rohit. Uh, someone like uh, uh, like Rishabh Pant, I think. See, this is how he plays. I'm I'm not I'm not defending uh, how he played, but we've got to understand that. Uh, that's that's his style, but yes, he has to learn quickly to kind of pick the right deliveries to play his shots. Mind you, he's only 21, so hopefully he learns it quickly. Uh, yes, the biggest concern I would I would definitely say is the opening pair. Uh, well, uh, K. Rahul got 44. You know, 63 was added uh, by the first pair, but uh, the way he went about the job, K. L. Rahul, I don't know. You know, uh, that's that's something that is. Uh, uh, that's kind of a question that has been uh, that I've been asking. Does KL Rahul really know how to go about in Test match uh, cricket? I mean, now that he plays all three formats, so is is he kind of trying to still figure out how to go about in different formats? Uh, as far as uh, uh, Murli Vijay is concerned, yes, it is a concern because both the times he got out almost to the same kind of deliveries and almost uh, the same way in terms of you know being late to a ball which was pitch up, which which was pitched up to him uh, so those are the areas of concern i'm sure which will be addressed mind you the next test is in perth where it's going to be quicker and bouncier right now abhishek uh, it is rare for india to go one up in a series held in the sena countries they did it in New Zealand in 1967-68, but New Zealand was uh, still till then more or less a uh, underperforming or a weak side. Now uh, they did it um, in England in 1986 and won the series. But recently, uh, in the past decade and a half or slightly more than that, whenever they have taken a lead in one of these countries, they have either uh, surrendered the lead and the series has ended in a draw as it did in 2003-04 in Australia or they have gone on to lose the series as they did in uh, South Africa 2006-2007 and also in England in 2014. Um, they did again take the lead in 2010-11 in South Africa and again the series was drawn. So given this history and you might add 2002 West Indies in this because they're also they lost the series after going one up. So given this history, what do you think their approach should be as they go in for the remaining test matches? See, one of the problems India are facing there is that they don't have an all-rounder in the squad. And since they don't have that, most sides in their place would I think have persisted with six batsmen for the rest of the series and hold on to that lead and wait for Australia to make to take desperate measures and make errors. Mind you, they've never won a series in Australia. Uh, there's some merit in that strategy, especially since India have let advantages slip in the past. Um, they have three number 11s in their lineup, which means they cannot have Ashwin and Jadeja at 7 and 8. It probably also means that they have to leave Kuldeep out and Kuldeep is the only risk spinner. But uh, so six batsmen, I think, is going to be the way ahead in this series. But then again, Kohli has often surprised us with his aggression. He may persist with the same 11 at Perth, but don't be surprised if he suddenly decides to drop Vijay or Rohit and plays five bowlers. And once Prithvi returns, he may drop both. He's a captain like that. I mean, you, we all know that. Right. And finally, Abhishek, uh, let me take... A combined historical and statistical view of yours about this current Indian team. So Virat Kohli became the first Asian captain to win test matches in South Africa, Australia and England. And what's more uh, remarkable is that he has done it within the course of more or less a year or so. Um, I won't dwell on the captaincy issue because to me, a captain is more or less almost as good as the team and a captaincy in uh, cricket, the esoteric powers are overrated. That's frankly my view. But uh, talking about the team, 
there are lots of thoughts about how strong the Indian team is currently and uh, how would you rate this current Indian side? I agree with you that uh, a captain is as good as his team. You may be an outstanding motivator and man manager and strategist, but none of that will work unless you have good players on your side. But uh, since you mentioned performance of a team, by sheer numbers, this team is as good as any India have produced. See, they have won three and lost six tests in Siena this year. I love, I love saying the word Siena, by the way. It gives, gives you a little war-like feeling. Okay, so the win-loss ratio this year is 0.5 in Siena. Now, if you include Kohli's defeat uh, in the previous, in the, in, on the previous tour, even then that number becomes 0.43. This win-loss ratio in Sena is better than Ganguly's 0.4 and Dhoni's 0.21. Uh, what about the other teams? Walegar's team was fantastic, sent, set new benchmarks, but um, that obviously also included that whitewash in 1974. Kapil's team won two tests in England and did not lose a single test in Sena, but that England side was uh, not their best. Gavaskar had an easy win in New Zealand when New Zealand were not the greatest side, but he also won a really tough one in Australia. That leaves Dravid. Now, uh, Dravid has achieved a lot. Won two tests, lost two tests, win-loss ratio one. That's outstanding, I, I think, for an Indian captain. Mind you, Dravid did most of it with a fast bowling attack consisting of Zahid, who was on a comeback trail, and lots of fresh faces. There was a there was there was an experimental pair of openers, Karthik and Jafar, and they did quite decently, I believe. Throughout those two years, Dravid did not get a single easy assignment in Test cricket, and he did pretty well, I would say. Uh, mind you, he also won a series in West Indies without Tendulkar, and West Indies is not included in these calculations. Now, was Dravid's team the best? I really don't know. But it was the most successful for sure. And uh, coming to this series, India had won, have won on and off in Sena, but not consistently. They have not won that one big series for some time now. They cannot let this opportunity grow. Now they, uh, let this opportunity go. I'll tell you why. Because um, not only are India one nil up. Not not only have India played better cricket. But also, Australia went on the defensive. Now, if you are one down, you cannot change. I mean, you cannot play defensive cricket from there on if you want to level the series. So, not only do Australia have to lift their standards, they also have to change their approach. They have to play more aggressively. I think the, so. If your opposition is on the back foot, both in terms of quality and in terms of approach, then I believe you won't get a better opportunity. But then India have a track record, as you have mentioned, of squandering of early opportunities. Let's see how this pans out. Right. A fascinating discussion to end a fascinating test match. And thanks to all of you for joining us. And thanks to Deep, Abhishek and Jason for taking time off and doing this with us. Uh, that's all that we have for you today and uh, stay tuned on our website for all the write-ups about this particular test series and uh, we'll be back uh, with the preview of the Perth test match which begins in a few days. Till then, take care.